Though the water appears to be still, millions of water molecules are moving about in random directions. Water molecules are also moving through the air around you, and that's what we're talking about today. Water in the atmosphere. I'm Mr. Ackerman, and this is Earth Science. First, let's talk about water. Water comes in three states. No, not those states. Solid, liquid, and gas. Water appears as solid when the temperature is zero degrees or below, and it will appear in nature as ice, snow, or hail. Water will appear as liquid when the temperature is between zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, and will appear in nature as rain or cloud droplets. And finally, water will appear as gas when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and above, and will appear as water vapor. Now, when water changes from one form to another, it's called condensation. When water changes from gas to liquid to solid, when water vapor condenses to liquid and then to ice. Because of this, it's going to lose its heat to get colder, and that heat is going to stay in the, in the air around it. The opposite is called evaporation. When liquid turns to gas, or ice will melt and turn to liquid. This is when it gains heat, cooling the air around it. But how much water is there in the air at any given moment? Well, the answer to that question is called humidity. The warmer the air is, the more water it can contain. As the air will cool, we will discuss what happens to that water. But first, let's talk about humidity. Specific humidity is an amount of water vapor in the air. For example, in this cup, I will tell you that there are four ounces of water. The same would be true for the air. I will tell you a specific amount of water in the air. When we refer to humidity, we're usually talking about relative humidity, which is a percentage based on the current amount the air can hold. For example, if I tell you relative humidity is 100%, that means the air is saturated or completely filled with water. And when the air is completely filled with water, chances are you're going to get rain soon. The way we measure water vapor in the air is with a psychrometer. A psychrometer has a dry bulb, which tells us the regular temperature, and has a wet bulb which tells us the temperature while evaporation occurs. The wet bulb has a little wick that has water on it, and here's a video about how it works. To begin with, you take the wet bulb thermometer and dip it in water. You spin the sling psychrometer around. While you're doing that, the water is evaporating off of the wet bulb. You then read the thermometers. The dry bulb, in this case, read 24 degrees Celsius, while the wet bulb read 21 degrees Celsius. If the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are the same, that means the air is completely filled with water. The reason for this is that the wet bulb is telling you the temperature of the air if it was 100% filled with water. If the dry bulb tells you the same temperature, that means that it, the air itself is actually filled with water 100%. But usually, the wet bulb is lower than the dry bulb. That means there's still room in the air for more water. If the difference between the dry bulb and the wet bulb decreases, that means relative humidity is going up. That means the amount of water in the air is going up, since the difference between our air right now and air at 100%, the difference is getting less. Let's take a look at a question that will help us answer and apply what we just learned. A dry bulb temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and a wet bulb temperature of 29 degrees Celsius were recorded at a weather station. What are relative humidity and the most likely weather conditions? Well, to answer this, we take a look at the chart on the reference table. Now, before you get scared away, take a look that the only pieces of information you need for this are dry bulb temperature, which we got in the question, and the difference between the wet and dry bulb, which we can figure out. The dry bulb temperature in the question was 30 degrees, the wet bulb was 29. The difference between 30 and 29 is one degree. Now, take a look on the chart. Under dry bulb, find the row that has 30 and find the column that has one and find where they overlap. The percentage number that is given to us is 93. 
This means that the relative humidity in the air is 93%, which means that the air is 93% full of water, which is pretty high. And chances are, when you have a lot of water in the air, you're gonna get a lot of rain. Now that you know this information, answer the question in the form. Let's try another one. What was the relative humidity of the air when these temperatures were recorded? And it shows you a psychrometer with two thermometer, a dry bulb and a wet bulb. The dry bulb has a temperature of 25 degrees. The wet bulb has a temperature of 20. Let's look at our reference table again and see if we can figure it out. Again, we're looking for the dry bulb temperatures, which are the rows, and the difference between the dry bulb and the wet bulb, which are our columns. In this example, we're given the dry bulb temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and the wet bulb temperature of 20 degrees. Our difference is 5 degrees. Now notice how the dry bulb temperatures are given to us in even numbers. Here we're given a dry bulb temperature that is odd, so we're going to look at both 24 and 26. Our column is going to be 5 degrees and see where they overlap, which is somewhere between 62 and 64. We said 24 is 62, 26 is 64, and we needed 25, which is 63. So our relative humidity is 63%. We said the warmer the air, the more water it can hold. Well, what happens to the air when it cools? Well, condensation occurs. The vapor turns to water. Previously on condensation. Ellen, there's moisture on the outside of my glass. It's condensation, Johnny. But what about the fog on the windows? It's not fog, Johnny. It too is called condensation. Condensation. So what happens to water vapor in the air as the air cools? Well, if you remember the warmer the air, the more water it can hold. So as it cools, that water vapor is going to condense and turn from gas to liquid. The temperature that is needed in order to turn this water from gas to liquid is called the dew point. The more water in the air, the less it has to cool, since it will reach its dew point quicker. Another important thing needed in order for condensation to occur in the air and for dew point is called condensation nuclei, which is the term for tiny particles in the air for water to condense onto. These particles can come from different dust, salt, different elements, as well as burning particles in the air. Let's take a look at an example. What is the dew point when the dry bulb temperature is 8 degrees Celsius and the wet bulb temperature is 2 degrees Celsius? Well, lucky for us, we have a very similar chart that works with dew point instead of relative humidity. Again, all you need is the dry bulb temperature and the difference between the wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures. In this question, we were given 8 degrees Celsius as our dry bulb and 2 degrees Celsius as our wet bulb, the difference being 6 degrees. Let's take a look at our chart. The dry bulb column is going to be 8 degrees. Our wet bulb column is going to be 2, the difference is going to be 6. This overlaps at negative 9. Our dew point is negative 9 degrees Celsius. That means that the temperature needed in order for the water vapor in the air to condense into water is going to be negative 9 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at another example that combines both relative humidity and dew point. This question again is from the form. What is the dew point when the air temperature is 26 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 77%? So first we need to look at the relative humidity chart in order to figure out the difference between our wet and dry bulbs because they didn't give it to us. On this chart, we're looking for the dry bulb of 26 degrees, a relative humidity of 77%. The dry bulb of 26 degrees rows over here and 77% is going to be this one over here. Follow up the column, which is our difference is three degrees Celsius. Now let's apply the information of 26 degrees Celsius as our dry bulb and our bulb difference as three degrees to the dew point chart. Our dry bulb again is 26, our difference is three. Let's find the 26 row, let's find the 
difference column of three and overlaps at 22 degrees Celsius. Our dew point is 22 degrees. This means that in order for the water in the ear to turn from vapor to liquid, the temperature needs to drop to 22 degrees from 26. Now when the ear temperature is going to be above zero degrees Celsius, the water vapor forms dew. If the air temperature is below zero degrees, the water vapor becomes frost. These droplets of water in the air around the condensation nuclei are so tiny that they will fall slowly and the slightest ear movement will keep them suspended. When this happens, it creates fog. That's all we need to know for today. Next, we're gonna discuss how water in the air causes cloud formation and rain. Make sure to answer the questions in the form and hit submit. If you have questions, feel free to leave a question on a comment on this video or send me a private message in the classroom. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.